Hey everyone, welcome back. My name is Mehul and in this video we are going to discuss something interesting which just happened. So there's this thing called remote development which is which is an official extension from VS Code itself which allows you to develop VS Code, develop in VS Code on remote servers. By that what I mean is that you can open your remote servers directly into VS Code. Now, if you are a geek, you know that you could do this technically over SSH with something known as RMate and RSub, which are like um, some sort of implementation in Ruby, which allow you to do the same thing, but it worked only for a single file. What VS Code is doing is that they allow you to directly develop the whole thing in vs code on a remote server so it opens up folders you can install extensions and all that stuff so vs code pretty much provides all of that out of the box now remember this is in preview right now so you need a vs code insider build for that but i'm just gonna go through over it how you could get started with it right now so you could see that i have this instance right now which is a cent os cent os 7 instance running on google cloud and uh, let me just show you how my config file looks like or rather i'll just go ahead and open my vs code here you could see that it's green because it's insider built so what i'm gonna do is right here i'm just gonna close this off all right so once we are in here what we need to do is actually let me just zoom in here so that you're able to see so what you have to do is go to extensions and search for remote development right so what this extension would do is that it's actually a pack of three extensions which are these three remote ssh containers and wsl we are going to use ssh right now because we want to um enable vs code on remote machines so right now what you have to do it's pretty simple just go ahead and first of all just open just write remote ssh press command shift v or rather let me just see if i could just enable developer all right so it's toggle screencast mode so once we have done that what i'm gonna do is command shift p command oops we're not getting it command shift p and i'm gonna write remote ssh and there we could see that we have a bunch of options here so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna first of all open my configuration file right and this is my file on a mac on a linux you would have a similar file so what you have to do is first of all create a host entry for your um, remote system right because this makes your life a lot a lot easier for mac it's pretty simple mac and linux you just have to use host keyword right um, whatever you want this to be denoted as use keychain yes because i'm using like the passphrase authentication as well host name contains your ip address user contains your dev and identity file is basically the file it will use for authentication purpose all right so once we have done that we're going to go ahead and remote ssh connect current window to host and i'm going to write vs code again which is as you can see it's a cent os 7 system um, running on google cloud right so you can see that it fires off this terminal and we could pretty much see exactly what's happening so it's setting up the host ssh host vs code it's initializing the server it's installing all those um, required things and so on and so forth so you could see that it connected to the ssh host and it says me to not close this terminal but obviously i can just press on this cross here which just minimizes it it does not closes it you could see that we are now connected via ssh to vs code and it activated the extensions as well there all right so you seem to have git 1.8.3 1.8.3.1 installed you would see that this notification right here is not for me it's from my sent os server so let's just go ahead and take a look at my git version right here so i'm gonna see git v is git version is 2.20.1 you could see it was pointing 1.8 something and right here if i go to my centos server you're gonna see git version is 1.8 which is right right so now we are completely immersed into my server so what i'm gonna do is first of all open a folder now it asks me where to what folder should i open you could see that this is my remote server actually not my real computer so i'm gonna go ahead with 
this dummy folder which I have created and OK. I'm going to press OK here because I won't want to open this particular folder. Right. And uh, right here, if I go ahead and go to this dummy folder, you're going to see that we get this particular information which this dummy folder contains. And once it reconnects it, uh, not really sure why it reconnects it again once it has connected. Um, but uh, yeah, this is pretty much uh, still in development, so we could expect a lot of changes. So you see that I could just update Git right here. Okay, so that does not really work. Right, so we are back here. And what I'm going to do is inside this src index.js, for example, you could see that this is just a dummy project I have uh, cloned off GitHub, but you could see that I am right now working with remote server, right? So I can just go ahead and save this file. And if I go ahead right here and write tail f src index.js right here, right? So if you take a look, if I add a comment right here, hit save. What we're going to see is once it's saved actually over the SSH tunnel, we should see a comment right here, right? So yeah, that's pretty cool. Now, the only thing which bothered me with this extension right now, I, I know this is still in development, but um, first of all, it's really slow over SSH, way too slow. I don't think my internet here is um, any sort of blocking factor or the Google Cloud server itself, but VS Code is running way too slow in opening these files and you know updating these files. It could be a bit faster than this. And uh, the second thing is, uh, um, it was not really stable with uh, my Ubuntu systems, so I had to use a CentOS image for this video. I'm not really sure why, but for ma my main code damn servers, which uses Ubuntu by the way. Um, the connection cape kept dropping very frequently, so I had to use that. Other than that, these guys are doing a pretty decent job. I'm really, really excited to see what um, is the next release, what's the stable release would look like, because it's pretty interesting. You could see that you have your whole project in front of you. You could install all these extensions. You could see that these are my local extensions which are installed. These are the VS Code extensions which are installed over there over on my cloud server so i could just go ahead and install like uh, maybe like eslint for this particular project right and you could see right here uh okay so it requires reload <clears throat> let's go with something which doesn't require reload so i'm gonna go with prettier right so it says me that it's already installed but if i want to install it on ssh well yes i want to install it on ssh and uh, once it's done installing, we should be able to use Prettier on these files as well. Pretty cool, right? So yeah, that was basically, and uh, let me see if we could do here, configure, right? And yeah, so anyway, so we could go ahead and install bunch of extensions, start debugging here, forward some ports. As you can see, you can forward a port. Um, you could actually open folders, which is pretty cool. One of the uh, greatest features I like for this part of development. And yeah, it's it's pretty exciting to see where Microsoft would take this. So yeah, that's all for this one. And uh, if you like this video, don't forget to subscribe, press the bell icon and like the video. So I'll see you then in the next video.